When you are just extracting the land or looking at it like the forest has no value other than in the trees that are cut down, you're really looking at it from a skewed and wrong perspective because once everything's cut down and everything has been destroyed, that's when you realize that you can't eat money. For the past at least a couple hundred years, agriculture has really had one main outcome, and that has been to produce a lot of food. And by producing the vast quantity of food that we have designed this agricultural system for, we've really had a, a lot of trade-offs with that. Whether from certain kinds of animal agriculture, from emissions coming from tillage, from fertilizer emissions, the way in which we conduct agriculture now really is one that is degenerative, that is taking not only natural resources, but social resources and extracting value from them, extracting wealth from them. So if you look at agriculture on a spectrum, you can go from one side where we have a, a very extractive type of agriculture, one where we have the, the natural resource base, the social resource base, and we are taking from that. We are, uh, we are losing soil, we are losing nutrients from that ground. And now we are beginning to understand the magnitude of those changes as it relates to climate change. Climate change is not going to affect everyone everywhere all the same way. Some places are getting hotter, some are drier, some are wetter, some are more intense precipitation or other kinds of events. When we start to see changes in what has been a relatively stable uh, weather system and climate system, we are not able to adapt very easily to these changes. Agriculture affects climate change in, in a number of different ways. Uh, first, as we know, uh, the, the carbon that is held in soils, that the most important piece is to be able to keep that carbon in the ground and, and out of the atmosphere. So that means we need to be you know, not deforesting where we have uh, you know, carbon stored in trees, not losing our soils through activities like tillage, and keeping that soil healthy and potentially even drawing in more carbon into those soils. Carbon is drawn uh, from the atmosphere into the roots of the plant. Uh, some of those sugars or carbohydrates go out through the roots of, the, of that plant and feed the microbes. And it really just starts this cycle of, uh, of empowering the biology in the, in the soil to uh, help to sequester that carbon. Regenerative farming builds soil health, and the soil is really the foundation of any kind of agricultural operation. The real the soil health, the microbes, and the fungus, everything, it all works in concert. Across a number of different axes of resiliency, we're seeing that more regenerative agricultural systems, especially ones that have uh, integrated livestock, that have more perennial and tree crops as part of them, are able to withstand some of the current and future expected impacts of climate change. Here on this piece of property, this land was terrible when I got here. It had been traditionally farmed corn and tobacco and the land was exhausted. The health of the soil, not just the chemical makeup, was not good. Um, so we really worked intensively to heal the land we have one whole area that was farmed and it was absolutely devoid of life and nothing but a big pile of mud um, because the people that had been here before had driven tractors through, really destroyed everything. The Virginia Free Farm works to create a more resilient food shed. We provide free nutrient-dense food that is locally produced many times by the people that are in need so that our carbon footprint from that food stays very small and is directly fed right back into the, um, the community that we serve. Regenerative agriculture is really a labor of love. My father is Penobscot and Abenaki. I am an enrolled at member of the Missisquoi. And um, we use a lot of the same techniques that my ancestors used for millennia. We do prescribed burns to prepare our garden beds. That nourishes the ground. It also kills the larvae and eggs and weed seeds. So we're not using pesticides or herbicides or anything like that. We use our livestock to mimic what would 
normally be wildlife going through an area. We also strategically plant a really biodiverse polyculture and we use it to work with nature so that we have garden all year round. Even in January, we are harvesting food here. We produce so much food effortlessly with regenerative techniques. We do no-till here, and I help coach other people to do the same thing. So I think by that spider web that we're weaving around our practices and inspiring other people to do the same thing, I think that's the most valuable way that we are impacting climate change by influencing others to do and grow the same way that we are growing. Some might think that this is a new kind of agriculture. What we really know is that regenerative agriculture is, is really has much more ancient roots. If you look at, at some Native American systems where they had the three sisters planted, uh, corn, bean, and squash as an example, is a type of, of cropping system diversification. When settlers came here, it was not a vast wilderness. It was a carefully cultivated food forest. My many great-grandmothers past kept the people that came and colonized this land from starving to death. They were master agriculturalists, and they did it all with an eye towards protecting the land. We evolved in nature and we need to learn to live with nature. We have great capacity to really capture carbon, and store carbon, if you just really know how to listen to the earth and understand what is needed, where, and really take that seriously and not try to control it. She will provide for you year round if you understand what she's saying to you. I think that the work of the Virginia Free Farm, it's beginning to, to create a, a really important narrative that has been missing from agriculture for so long. Creating connection between food and people. To not just make food a commodity that we put a price on. With examples like the Virginia Free Farm, we're seeing opportunities to really recreate that narrative of how food comes from the soil and is able to nourish people and communities and really create this broader notion of soil wealth, a term of art that we use that, that connects soil health and community wealth. And when we're really taking agriculture and looking at it from a more holistic perspective, we see these opportunities to improve soil health, combat climate change, produce nourishing food, and really empower communities to, uh, to become strong and resilient. Regenerative agriculture has a huge potential to change health, both human health and environmental health, and it's going to be a game changer in the future. We have great ability to safeguard this planet for the next generation and make sure that it's here for our kids and our grandkids and their grandkids.